Dennis Nilsson, also known as the Muswell Hill Murderer and the Kindly Killer, was one of Britain's most infamous necrophilic and ephebophilic serial killers. His first victim was in 1978, and he continued to kill until 1983, when he was finally arrested. Nilsson murdered at least 15 young men, engaged in sexual activities with their corpses, and dissected their bodies. Due to similarities between their MO, lifestyle, and sexual preferences, Dennis Nilsson was also called the British Jeffrey Dahmer. Dennis Andrew Nilsson was born on November 23, 1945, in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. He was the middle one of three children to Elizabeth White and Olav Moksheim. His father was a Norwegian soldier who had arrived in Scotland following the German occupation of Norway. Later, he adopted the surname Nilsson. Dennis's childhood was tough. His father was an alcoholic, which led to his parents' divorce when he was four years old. Elizabeth remarried and sent Dennis to live with his grandparents, but only for a couple of years. According to him, his first major traumatic event was the death of his grandparent before his sixth birthday, the only father figure he had and respected. He was very close to his grandfather, and his loss produced a severe fallout on his personality. That, combined with his mother letting him see his grandfather's body before the burial, made young Dennis quiet and reserved. He also started to reject any form of affection from other adults. His favorite activity was to spend hours alone at the harbor, watching the fishing boats as they arrived and departed. Nilsson's relationship with his big brother was never good. In fact, he hated Olaf Jr. for always being the favorite. Coming to puberty, he realized he was not heterosexual, but was not sure if he was homosexual or bisexual. Wanting to test his sexuality, he tried to touch his younger sister Sylvia and his brother Olaf Jr. in a sexual way. Olaf Jr. woke up and caught him. He started to bully Dennis from that moment on and called him a hen, Scottish slang for a girl. When Nilsson was 14, he decided that life in stricken Aberdeenshire was too dull for him and joined the Army Cadet Force. He did that in preparation for enlisting in the British Army after finishing high school. Nilsson cleared the entrance exam and joined the Army Catering Corps, and later passed the official catering exam and joined the Army as a chef. He was deployed to Aden, Cyprus, and Berlin. He served until 1972 when he decided to leave. Nilsson worked briefly as a police officer in London upon leaving the Army. During his police training, he discovered he was fascinated by autopsied bodies. Although the police work helped him develop his morbid tastes, he resigned and began working as a civil servant in a job center. Nilsson had his first encounter with the police as a villain in 1973. David Painter, a young man Nilsson had met at the job center, accused Nilsson of photographing him while he was asleep. Nilsson was brought in for questioning, but was never charged. He was involved in superficial relationships with men, but he was not happy. At this point, he had a problem with alcohol and began to isolate himself. He wanted someone who wouldn't leave, and, just like Jeffrey Dahmer, he found that the only one who would fit that description would be a corpse. As he would later tell the police, his first homicide took place on December 30th, 1978. He met his victim in a pub, took him to his home, and drank until they fell asleep. When Nilsson awoke the following morning, 
he strangled the boy with a necktie and drowned him in a bucket of water. He then masturbated twice over the dead body and hid it under the floorboards. Eight months later, he built a pyre in his garden and burned the body along with some tires to conceal the smell. The victim was identified on January 12, 2006. His name was Stephen Dean Holmes, and he was only 14 years old at the time of his murder. In October 1979, he met Andrew Ho, a student from Hong Kong. They met in a bar and went to Nilsen's house for more drinking and sex. During their sexual intercourse, he attempted to murder Andrew. Andrew got away, and even though Nilsen was questioned by the police, there were no charges pressed. His second victim was Kenneth Ockenden, a Canadian tourist. The pattern was the same. They met in a bar on December 3rd, 1979, went to Nilsen's home, drank something, and had sex. Ockenden died, strangled with an electrical cable. Nilsen cleaned up Ockenden's corpse and shared the bed with it. He took pictures of the body, had sexual intercourse with it, and placed it under the floorboards. He took the body out frequently and engaged in conversations with it. Kenneth Ockenden was one of the few victims reported missing. The third victim was Martin Duffy, a 16-year-old homeless boy from Birkenhead. They met on May 13, 1980. Nilsen strangled Duffy, then drowned him in the kitchen sink. He brought the corpse to bed, masturbated over it, and kept it in a wardrobe. After two weeks, Nilsen moved Duffy's body under the floorboards next to Ockenden's body. Victim number four was Billy Sutherland, a 27-year-old male prostitute from Scotland. Nilsen strangled Sutherland with his bare hands. Victims number five, six, seven, and eight were never identified. Nilsen remembered very little about them or had no recollection at all. All that is known is that victim number five was probably from the Philippines or Thailand and victim number six was a young Irish laborer he met in a bar. Everything known about victims number nine and ten is that both of them were young Scottish men he had picked up in pubs in Sutu. Victim number eleven was a skinhead Nilsen met at Piccadilly Circus. He had a tattoo around his neck saying, Cut here. Nilsen hung his naked torso in his bedroom for 24 hours before putting it under the floorboards. Sometime between victims number 6 to 11, on November 10th, 1980, Nilsen had another encounter with the police. A potential victim managed to escape, and although he called the police, no action was taken. The officers dismissed the case as a domestic disagreement between two homosexual lovers. Malcolm Barlow was Nilsen's 12th victim. He killed Barlow on September 18th, 1981. In October 1981, Nilsen moved to a new house in Muswell Hill and had his 13th murder in December. John Howlett was one of the few who was able to fight back, but Nilsen managed to drown him after he kept him with his head under the water for five minutes. Nilsen then dismembered the body. The body parts were either hidden around the house or flushed down the toilet. The 14th victim was a homeless man named Graham Allen. Nilsen disposed of the body the same way he did with John Howlett. Nilsen killed his final victim on January 26, 1983. Stephen Sinclair was a drug addict who had the misfortune to meet Nilsen in Oxford Street. Nilsen took him to his place where they drank together. Sinclair mixed alcohol with heroin, which made him easy prey. 
Nielsen strangled him and dismembered the body, again flushing down the toilet some of the parts. On February 8, 1983, Michael Katrin, plumber, was called to 23 Cranley Gardens, an apartment building in North London. The residents have been complaining about blocked drains for a while. When he proceeded to fix the problem, he discovered that the blockage was formed by a flesh-like substance and small broken bones. Police investigators were called to the scene and soon found out that the remains were indeed parts of a human body and managed to track them back to Nilsson's apartment. Searching the apartment, they could identify other body parts scattered all over. Dennis Nilsson was arrested on February 9th, 1983, and confessed everything. Although he admitted he had killed 15 or 16 men, he was formally charged with six counts of murder and two attempted murders. He was found guilty on all counts on November 4th, 1983, and was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. The possibility of parole was eliminated in 1994. On May 12th, 2018, Dennis Nilsson died from complications after stomach surgery. He was 72 at the time of his death. <laughs>